Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Grenfell Talk. My name is Tom Cochran, and joining me tonight is Jerry Etienne from the Grenfell Campus Theater Program. Now, Grenfell Talk is a brand new web show that we're starting, and the whole point is to connect with you guys about what's happening here at Grenfell. We're going to talk about our programs, some of the cool stuff that our students are doing, some of the stuff that they're doing both on campus and in other parts of the world. Um, hopefully talk with some students who go to Harlow next semester. The possibilities are really endless. Um, so if you have ideas about that, please feel free to get in touch and we'll talk a little bit about how you can do that. Um, well, right now, part of the show is definitely uh, an interactive component. So we want to hear from you. If you're watching at home and you have questions, send them in. There's two ways you can do that. Number one, Twitter. Um, if you send us a tweet at, at Grenfell Campus, We'll get that. Uh, Kirsten McCaffrey is sitting just off camera, and she's watching our Twitter feed. So if you have any feedback, whether that's questions or just ideas, send them your way. Kirsten will flag us and let us know that it's coming through. And we'll make sure that we take a little bit of time at the end of the show uh, to check in with your questions. So if you have questions about anything we talk about or anything like that, um, we'll, we'll, we'll check on those. The other way you can ask us uh, questions or give us feedback is through the YouTube page. So if you're watching on YouTube right now, uh, you can leave a comment in the comment section below the video, uh, and we'll check in on that as well. So without further ado, Jerry, thank you for coming out. Hey, you're welcome. I'm glad to do it. Yeah, it's super cool to have you here um, to talk about the theater program, to talk about some of the stuff that your students are working on, um, some of the opportunities that they have, all that sort of stuff. So why don't you take a second and tell us your your quick pitch about the theater program at Grenfell? Like, what is it like if you were in an elevator with someone going to maybe the 60th floor from the lobby? Right. <laughs> what would you tell them about Grenfell? I would tell them first of all that it's the I think it's the greatest theater program on the planet. Uh, part of the reason for that is because it's it's an intimate place. It's a safe place. Uh, you come when you come here into the theater program. It's like a family. Um, you do four years of pretty intense study. It's not an easy program. It's a very difficult program. It's very uh, demanding time management wise. You have to be very very good at time management. Don't worry, you'll learn how to do that while you're here. Uh, and you learn the gamut uh, in stagecraft. You learn about wardrobe. You learn about uh, props, you learn about lighting, about sound, about drafting, about scenic painting, about rigging, what am I missing, about stage management. So you learn the whole schmozzle. Uh, in acting, you learn about movement, about speech and voice, you learn about scene study, about monologues, about auditioning, is about uh, uh, auditionings, about auditioning, <laughs> uh, about what to do when you get out of here, which is so very, very important. And that includes how to get an audition, how to get an agent, how, how to get a job, basically, how to create your own work, how to get grants, how to do income tax, that sort of thing. So you really do get a pretty big overview mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of the craft. Uh, we hope that you develop a respect for the craft. Uh, you also get a background into what theater is by taking theater history and what art is by taking art history. And, and you also learn more about the literature of the program. So if I were to come to you and say, uh, or if a director were to come to you and say, um, I, we're, we're thinking about doing a Chekhov play, you would know who that was as a, as as, as, uh, as compared to say somebody like a Brecht or 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 a, a restoration author or or a Greek playwright, <clears throat> so you 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 kind of get a little bit of experience with all that literature, so you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, and you also get a lot of hands-on stuff. That's the big thing about Grenfell yeah. is that you are on stage all the time. The stagecraft students do twelve shows before they leave here. The acting students do six. You're on stage from second year onward. Um, you're on stage actually in first year because we have directed studies course, where our fourth yeah. year students, uh, our fourth year students <clears throat> take on a project that's theirs right from the get go. They take it right from whatever it is, whether it's a play or a, or something they put together, a movement. We got a movement piece happening this year. It's cast from the students and sometimes cast from outside uh, people from outside campus. Um, so therefore, the first year students are almost always involved in those projects. So yeah. you get to do do your practice your craft every year. And that's very exciting. And the same thing goes with the stagecraft students, yeah. right? They're, they're doing their stuff right from day one, hands-on stuff all the time. 
uh, our philosophy here is is that the only way you can learn theater mm -hmm. is to do theater. I mean, you can talk about it till you're blue in the face, yeah. and then you'll get up on stage, and you will not be able to do it unless you've already done it. Yeah. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that's something that's kind of unique about Grenfell? Not in that the it, you get so much experience. I think it's kind of unique. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every theater program sure. is going to give you some sure. hands-on experience, but that's what we really focus on yeah. here. You know, um, it's not a conservatory program, but the actual, you know, putting together an actual production, we probably do as much or more than any other university program in the country. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, why don't you, before we get into some like nuts and bolts about the program or, or how to get into the program and, and all that sort of stuff, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and maybe your background in theater and, and how you got to, to, to chairing the theater program right now? All right. Well, it started when I was very young. <laughs> <laughs> did you like to be? Did, you, did your parents tell you that you like to act? Since well, you were five I, years I used old, to. I used to imitate a fellow by the name of Charlie Chamberlain, <laughs> and none of you guys know who that is. I know you don't. From a show called Don Messer's Jubilee, which was they they made back in I think it was um, eighteen twenty two or something uh, somewhere around that. You no, know, it was a little <laughs> later than that. But but it was a show. It was a Canadian show about music. It was it was uh, it was. Uh, uh, about uh, kind of had a maritime feel to it, Eastern Canadian feel to it, and there was a fellow on there by the name of Char Charlie Chamberlain. And when I was about four or five years old, <laughs> I used to tap dance with Charlie <laughs> Chamberlain. That tap dance with Charlie Chamberlain. Right. Um, and I remember one day I was tap dancing. I got a little carried away, and I my knee came up and hit me in the nose and <laughs> gave me a nosebleed. And my dad got had a big laugh out of that. And uh, I decided I was going to run away from home. <laughs> nice. Did you join mother, a circus? Well, no, my mom made biscuits, so oh, nice um, that her. kept me home. Oh, yeah, okay. that's what kept me home. <laughs> but that's <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe that's where it started. I don't know. When I when I graduated high school, I had no intention of going into theater. But but you know, there were a lot of cute girls in the theater program oh. uh, where I went to university. Okay. So I. Thought thought that's where I'm going to go <laughs> okay. for an elective. And and I went there and um, there was something about it, about theater. And I think it has to do, had to do with trying to figure out why people do what they do mm -hmm. and who people really are. And really starting to, to, to realize that, uh, that the world is a really interesting place when you see people, you really see people mm -hmm. and you don't just walk down a hallway and see things going by you that you don't care about. But when you start taking an interest, um, it's a fascinating place yeah. to be. Yeah. And I got hooked on it <clears throat> and um, I was going to be a mathematics teacher and I changed my major first and then I changed my program second <laughs> okay. and I was no longer going to be a teacher and I went into theater and I completed my degree and then I started working. I went out and uh, auditioned and I managed to get my very first job was uh, doing a play called Romeo and Juliet, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with and which we happen to be doing as our final production next term. Oh, really? With the fourth year, uh, fourth year class. Um, and uh, I did that at the Neptune Theater in Halifax. And, um, and then I sort Who of did became... You play? I, I played Balthazar. Oh. It was a little little tiny yeah. part. And, but they were doing it in rep with West Side Story. Oh, so cool. I was doing a musical and a Shakespeare piece. Very exciting. And in West Side Story, I was playing Chino. And he's the guy who shoots Tony, yeah, the hero. Yeah, yeah. So that was great. <laughs> I got to shoot a big gun. and um, Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I got started. And yeah. then from there, I kind of one job led to the next. And I met all kinds of people. Um, kind of very lucky. I, you know, life is about luck, as mm -hmm. Tim Minchin says. Mm -hmm. It's about luck. Um, it is. So I got very lucky. And I, and I kept getting work, uh, one job after another after another. And I came out to Newfoundland. And I, did, uh, I met a fellow by the name of Maxim Mazumdar, mm -hmm. who kind of started theater on the West Coast in Newfoundland. And I did a couple of seasons at the Stephenville Festival, and I got to know theater in Newfoundland a little bit. And and then from there, I, I auditioned for the Stratford Festival, and I got into the Stratford Festival, and I did four years at Stratford, which were pretty eye-opening from a you know a young yeah. kid from the prairies. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, that was a, a fantastic experience, and I got to work with Shakespeare, who I love. Um, from there I went and I applied for a, a position that I really had no qualifications for at all. <laughs> 
which was to run a theater company here in Corner Brook, Theater okay. Newfoundland Labrador, okay. which is now the Gross Morin Theater Festival. Yeah. Um, and I got it. And so <laughs> I ran Theater Newfoundland Labrador, started up the Gross Morin Theater Festival in Cowhead. And uh, then when I had enough of that, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop doing that. And I'd been kind of teaching at Grenfell off and on as mm -hmm. a guest artist while I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And then I went off to uh, Wolfville, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of took the reins of the Atlantic Theater Festival for five years, five mm -hmm. seasons. And uh, when that was done, then I went off and freelanced for a while. And uh, I came back here to Newfoundland to the Grossborn Theater Festival yeah. uh, to do a season. And I, and I looked around and I saw all these students and I, I realized that I had taught a lot of these <laughs> students. And I felt so good about that yeah. because it was, it makes you feel very, very, very proud to mm -hmm. see that you kind of pass something on and then they take that of course and run with it and mm -hmm. do wonderful things with the little tidbits that you give them. And they, they, they become wonderful actors in their own right. And we have a lot of those wonderful actors, you know, making up yeah. the Newfoundland, especially the Newfoundland th yeah, theater sure. scene and spilling out all over Canada in the film industry in the music industry in the theater, of course, industry, TV, mm -hmm. uh, they're doing all kinds of wonderful mm -hmm. things. And I saw that and I said, you know what? I think I might like to do that. Yeah. So I went off and got my master's degree after not being in school for 190 years. And, <laughs> and um, the time's well with the TV show from the 1800s. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since then. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I got my degree, and I and I uh, there happened to be a, a, a job opening shortly after I I got my degree here at Grenfell. So I applied for it. I got it. Here I am. Excellent. That's excellent. How was that? Five, That's five not minutes? Too bad. That's not, not bad. Too bad. You might have made it to the 100th floor, uh, <laughs> 64th building, but it's not too bad. Um, okay, so you're, you're, help, you're helping lead this, this program forward. Um, so if someone's watching at home and, or wherever they're watching and they're maybe a high school student and they're thinking, okay, I'm going to come to this program and there's this guy named Jerry and he's going to be there. But, okay, so what else? Like what, if someone's walking through the door of the, the fine arts building at Grenfell, what's their experience like for that first year? Um, what sort of people are they working with? Um, yeah, w what is that kind of that well, beginning experience like? Right. First year to me is all about um, finding out who you are and how you work from both sides, from my side as, as your instructor mm -hmm. and from your side as you. <laughs> yeah. So what we what we try to do in first year is to give you a kind of an idea of, of, a, of a structure of how you get to kind of day one of rehearsal um, and what you have to do to prepare to get there. And then the rest of that first year is really more about you exploring you. Mm -hmm. I think on both sides, really, you get some basic concepts about stagecraft and, and some basic concepts about acting, but, Mostly it's about finding out how your voice works, what kind of habits you have physically, mm -hmm. um, where you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. what things make you feel uncomfortable, yeah. and kind of warming your way through that so that by the time you're done first year, you feel a little more comfortable about really expressing yourself, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what theater is about. Anybody in the world can learn a bunch of words on a page sure. and recite them that's easy yeah <laughs> right what's hard is figuring out where these words come from and mm -hmm. what they really mean and how to tap into the emotion behind them right right um so in order to do that you have to kind of understand yourself a little bit okay and how you work how you can make yourself work better and that's kind of what first year is about uh for acting students, for stagecraft students, it's a, it's a bit more about learning basic techniques of stagecraft. Right. A little bit of lighting, a little bit of everything, right? right? So everything you get a, yeah. Basics. Yeah, and, um, and one thing I should tell you is that all of the acting students take stagecraft in first year as mm -hmm. well, so that they get an idea of that side of things. Cool. And all of the stagecraft students, oh no, take <laughs> acting as well. Is that Some is that, of them are terrified and they sit thing. in class and go, <laughs> but you know they get over that and okay. they're able to present themselves in public and that helps yeah. anybody you I know bet, if you yeah. can present yourself in public even a little bit 
it's you're going to get a lot farther in life than if you freeze as soon as yeah. you see you're in front of anybody at all. And so I guess the stagecraft students get that, and then the acting students must get sort of an understanding of what's happening behind the scenes. That's right, they're... and they get to pound a nail or two, you yeah. know. And uh, some of them have never pounded a nail before in their <laughs> lives, right. so they yeah. get to learn how to build something, that's get right. their hands dirty a little bit. That's um, right, and they understand what the stagecraft students do, and that's the most that's the important thing about right. it, right? So that when we get to performance time, yeah. we don't have prima donna actors going around I need this right now we don't want that right, right. because uh, because they now know that the stagecraft students get a very short period of time to put this all together comparatively yeah. speaking yeah. you know the actors get weeks and weeks stagecraft students get days yeah and uh, they've got to pull it together and they're under a lot of pressure and you know everybody makes mistakes so um, they need to know that in first year you also kind of try to get a grasp on theater history so uh, you're learning a little bit about about theater and how mm -hmm. it developed right from the Greeks right up till today. Cool. It's gone through a lot of different phases. Yeah, I bet. So you learn about that in first year. Were you around for all those phases? Well, no, I didn't show up until just about 100 years after Shakespeare. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so you learn about that. Uh, you, take, you take some basic English courses, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of basic English courses. And uh, and then you get to take a few electives of things that you know you have an interest in. So and and the reason for that is so that you know if you if you get three years into this course and go I don't know if this is for me, mm -hmm. you have options. Mm -hmm. You know you have some electives that you can take along the way so that you can say well you know I don't know if this is going to be my big thing. I've learned a lot doing this, but I've got these other courses as well now that I can tap into, and in another year I can get another degree. Yeah. So. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's your first year, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it's eight months or so. Um, if someone finishes that first year and they really like theater and they're totally jazzed about it, can they? Is there stuff they can do in the summer then? Absolutely, absolutely. Funny you should ask that, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> it's almost there like it's almost like we discussed one, it beforehand. One of the wonderful things about about studying here in Cornerbrook uh, in Newfoundland is that, believe it or not, there is a ton of theater going on in Newfoundland. There's a very good chance that you will be able to land a job in theater mm -hmm. even after your first year. We have students that are working right across, right across the island. In fact, now, you know, I'm going to get into a bit of hot water for saying this, but <laughs> I think that Grenfell has really become the face of theater in, in Newfoundland in many, many ways. Let me tell you a little story. It's, um, when I was running Theater Newfoundland Labrador, remember my life story, um, and I started the yeah. Grossmore Theater Festival. The reason that I started the Grossmore Theater Festival when I started the Grossmore Theater Festival was because the year before, the first graduates from the Grenfell Theater program graduated mm -hmm. and everybody left. Right. Because okay. they didn't think there was anything for them to do here. Right. And I thought, I want to start something so that when they graduate, they can immediately jump into something in the summer. So I started the Grossman Theater Festival. Now, since that time, many classes have graduated. Many of them have worked for the Grossman Theater Festival. And now the actors, the senior actors in Newfoundland are Grenfell graduates. Cool. So we've kind of started to develop our our uh, our uh, the way theater looks in yeah. Newfoundland through Grenfell. So now we have companies popping up all over the place. We have Stephenville Festival, we have uh, Theater Newfoundland Labrador, we have the uh, the the the, the uh, Trinity Pageant, mm -hmm. um, uh, Grand Bank mm -hmm. Theater Festival, uh, Beyond the Overpass Theater Festival. I can't remember what the New World Theater Festival has a new name now, and I can't remember what it is, but it's the Shakespearean Festival. It comes out of Cupid's Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. We have companies in St. John's, um, and all of these companies work. Oh, and uh, Grossmore Summer Music here in Cornerbrook mm -hmm. as well. Um, we have a strong amateur theater uh, presence in Cornerbrook, uh, and all those places are possibilities for employment in the summer so our our not only our graduates but our students when they finish whatever year they're in yeah. are applying for jobs all over the province and a lot of them are getting it that's they're really getting cool. work i would say at least half of our students at least half of our students are working in newfoundland in the summertime cool so uh they, they get some work um during the summer they come back they do a couple they do some some more school work i'm assuming they do more 
through an acting, they do more acting classes, stagecraft, they get further into stagecraft. Mm -hmm. um, they continue to do a couple courses in English in mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. um, they get to their fourth year. Right. And I know there's some magic that happens in the fourth year. Yes. If you make it to fourth if year. If you make it. If year. you make it to fourth year. <laughs> and we make it as hard as we can for you to get to fourth year. It's not easy. Let me tell you that again. It's a, not an easy course. Um, if you make it the fourth year, you spend the first term of fourth year completely immersed in theater. All of your classes are theater classes. You take, you take acting or stagecraft classes. You take acting or stagecraft master classes. Now, a master class is where we bring in professionals who work uh, in, in the country, in the profession in our country, in Canada, or we've had people from overseas, from England, um, uh, and we bring them in and they teach in a specialized area. We, we have a, we kind of assess our students and say who would work well for these students. And then we go out and look for them and try to bring people in. <clears throat> and we've been very, very successful. We brought in some, some wonderful, wonderful people who have done great work with our students, both in the acting side and the stagecraft side. Um, so you take that, um, and then you take uh, a class called Directing and Design, which is all about how directors work, how designers work, and how they work together. <clears throat> so you get to um, the, the final project of that is, is putting together a show and, and saying, this would be my concept. This is how I'm going to mm -hmm. go about achieving my concept directorially and from a design mm -hmm. uh, perspective. Um, how many is that? One, two, three, four. Is that right? That's four. And of course, there's production, so you'll be doing a, a, a another big yeah. show in the fall. Yeah, and then then you do a, a class called um, uh, directed studies, and that's the class that I was talking a little bit about before, where you are in complete creative control of your own project. Yeah, you take it right from the bootstraps, right up. You're responsible for everything, 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 including costumes and set and props and, and casting and directing and sound and, um, and, and marketing and promotion, all of it, all of it, all of it. Yeah. And uh, that all culminates uh, at the end of the term around just, uh, I think they're all going to be playing in about a week, I think. Yeah. And, that, and we take those, all those shows, bring them off campus and uh, we present them in a, in a, in a venue off campus. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be about 40 minutes long each. Sometimes they go a little longer, sometimes a little shorter, but uh, it's a wonderful chance for you to do your own thing and, and make your own very special project. Cool. Project. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so if someone's watching live in Cornerbrook, where can they go to see those? This year, they are happening in uh, two locations for sure. One is at Swirsky's on Broadway. If you're in Cornerbrook, you know where that is, I would suspect. And the other is in the food court down here on campus. Right, and some of those are happening next week. That's right. So this is November 25th. We're already going live. So if you're watching live, then uh, you can check those out next week. Um, and then there's also, of course, they're, they're still doing um, the larger scale productions, right? That's so, right. And those are happening those tomorrow are, night. There's yeah, a tomorrow happening. night, we open Love's Labor's Lost. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So there's two productions that happen every term. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, of course, when the first term is over, mm -hmm then the real magic happens. Right. And our fourth year students, all of our fourth year students, stagecraft and acting, uh, fly to England where we stay on our, uh, at our Harlow campus. Harlow is about, what is it, about 45 minutes to an hour yeah. from London, which is just a quick train ride, which you make pretty much every day while you're there. And we study at Harlow campus. Uh, what that means is you get up in the morning, you rehearse your final production, which is just the fourth year class. Um, so you rehearse for a, a few hours, you have lunch. Um, you either, one, um, have a master class teacher come in who is an, uh, a working professional from the West End of London, which is where the best theater in the world is made. Arguably, you know, some people say, oh, <laughs> Broadway is where it really happens, but Broadway in the West End is where it really happens. Uh, and we get working professionals from there to come in and teach our students. And that is uh, remarkable. So they do master classes twice a week. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not doing master classes, you're hopping on the train and going into London and 
uh, seeing museums, galleries, backstage tours, um, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, there's a whole list of things that we do while we're there. And the, the big thing, of course, is that you see yeah. the best theater in the world. That must you're, be pretty incredible. It is pretty incredible. You're, you're, you're required to see 15 productions for what a, sure. What while a you're shame. There. What a shame. Yeah. I know. It's terrible. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but uh, so you see 15. Most students see more than 15. Um, and then you have to review 15 shows. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other things that we do while we're there is we is we take a trip to Stratford. Mm -hmm. So you see the Stratford Festival in Stratford upon Avon, which is uh, a pretty uh, eye opening experience. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, we go and see Stonehenge. Uh, we go to a little town called Bath, and you know if the spirit hits us, we might go somewhere else too. Yeah. Who knows? But but it's a chance to study in London, right in the heart of theater. Um, a lot of our students now are starting to come a little early mm -hmm. and go somewhere else in Europe because it's so cheap once you get there right. to just pop right. to and from England. Right. And at the end of it, at the end of this eight weeks, yeah. uh, it's spring break. But the end of the seven weeks is, sp is spring break. So you take your eighth week and you can do whatever you'd like. And if you're in London, why not pop off to Paris or pop off to Berlin or pop off to Amsterdam or somewhere, yeah. you know, or Rome or somewhere. Most of our students do that, and they spend another week in another place that they've always wanted to see in That's so Europe. That's cool. Yeah, so it's very, very exciting. And then we come back, um, and we have a little bit of time where we finish putting our show together, yeah. make our final presentation. There's a little paperwork to do, like major papers that you have to write and such, because it is a university. Of course, yeah. Um, and, uh, and there you go. You graduate, you go off, and you uh, rule the world. So what are people doing when they... They, they go off and rule the world. Like, what are some of these, well, what I'll are some examples of, of some alumni? What are they it's doing? Another, it's another big bragging point for us, I yeah. think, because uh, our alumni work. They work in theaters across the country. They work in places like Stratford, Shaw, Toronto. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Toronto theaters, but uh, theaters like Soul Pepper, uh, Canadian Stage, um, I don't know. Uh, all kinds of theaters in Toronto. Um, also in Newfoundland theater, mm -hmm. like I said before, our our students are making Newfoundland theater right now. Um, uh, we've had we've got tech people that are working uh, have worked Cirque du Soleil are doing um, doing tours, um, or, uh, rock concerts, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, what else can I? Oh, uh, the film and television. We've got Sue Kent, uh, who's yeah. a, a regular on uh, This Hour is 22 Minutes, yeah. is a Grenfell grad. Uh, Johnny Harris, who just was nominated for Gemini Award for Murdoch Mysteries, I think he won it actually, is a Grenfell grad. We've got people who've gone off to write. Sherry White mm -hmm. writes for CBC uh, Television right now and has won Gemini Awards. One, maybe not one, but nominated for sure. Um, We've got technicians. Uh, we've got one guy in, in Toronto that works constantly as a mm -hmm. stage manager all the time. Uh, we've got people who are in film and TV doing their own film and TV and making shorts and doing some major films. Um, I would say, I would say, I would stick my neck out and say that we have uh, at least as many, if not more, of our graduates working than any other program at Memorial, oh. percentage wise. Yeah. Right. Um, I really think that about seventy percent of seventy to seventy five percent at least of our of our graduates work. That's excellent. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So when your mom says you're not going to get any work doing theater, she's wrong. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you heard it here. That's uh, that's excellent, and it's really cool to hear the stories uh, about people that came from Grenfell and then they go off and do something and they see them on TV or on stage or yep. wherever. So if you're watching this, I was trying two minutes or uh, Murdoch mysteries and you know that they, that's where some of those people started. And, and some people, you know, don't go off into theater. Of course. They don't go into performing. Mm -hmm. uh, some people go, for instance, we have uh, Geraldine Hallett and Phil Churchill mm -hmm. from the once mm -hmm. our Grenfell grads. Uh, we have other musicians, uh, Andrew O'Brien, yeah. who has uh, been very, become very successful as a musician has, has done that. Others have become directors. We have Stephen Drover who's in Vancouver and, and has won awards for directing theater in, in uh, British Columbia. Yeah. Um, we have some that, that don't even do that. They, they go off and they, 
they move forward and take a master's degree. We have uh, we have people at York University in Toronto, at York University in the UK. We have a young fellow who just got just got accepted at the Actors Studio inside the Actors Studio. I don't right. know if you know who that is, but. Uh, that used to be a big thing for me when I was your age, watching Inside the Actor's Studio. It's one of the major um, uh, uh, theater training institutions in New York City. Uh, and uh, and uh, one of our students just got accepted there last year. Um, so, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're going off all over the place yeah. and doing wonderful things. Very cool. So we've got a couple minutes left. And I, if someone's watching, they might be curious about how they could get access to all this stuff. Like how, do, how, do, how do they get in and experience that? So, I mean, obviously they, they go to grenfell.mon.ca and they click on apply and they fill out the application, but there's a separate theater application, mm -hmm. which is, it takes a couple other steps. What, uh, what's involved with that? Well, the extra steps are, are basically two things. If you're a stagecraft student, you have to write us a letter telling us why you want to study technical mm -hmm. theater, uh, first of all. And secondly, why you want to do that here? If you're an acting student, you have to write us a letter and say why you want to study acting and why you want to do that here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just so that we can figure out if you're in the right headspace, uh, if, if we're going to be able to meet your expectations and uh, on the one hand, and if you're ready really, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or, or if, if your idea of what it means to be an actor or to be a theater technician is kind of in line with what we think it is. Mm -hmm. um, the other step is uh, for stagecraft students is having some kind of a portfolio. Now, uh, uh, that doesn't really have to be very extensive at all mm -hmm. because what we do is we have a kind of an interview process that you go through as a stagecraft student where you'll, we, you'll speak with our, with our faculty and, uh, and we'll just kind of ask you questions about how you feel about things and, you know, the kind of work that you've done in the past and how much experience you've got. And based on that, um, we'll be of that. And of course, you know, your application and, and your marks and all that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll make a decision as to whether we think you're ready for the program uh, whether we think that that this program is going to give you what you're looking for, because we don't want you to come here just so that we can have you here. And then, you know, once we get you here, we hope you'll change your mind. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that you're coming, what you're, what you want when you come here, you get. Mm -hmm. So that's the stagecraft side on the, on the acting side, you have to do an audition and um, right. the audition consists of two pieces that you have two monologues that you have to learn. Uh, one of them, should be a classical piece. Yep. Shakespeare would be great. A Shakespeare piece would be great. Doesn't have to be a Shakespeare piece, but that would be nice. And the two pieces should be contrasting. So if one is a comedy, the other one might be a tragedy or drama. Um, that's not the only contrast you can have. One could be very, very still. One could be have a lot of movement in it. Um, so as long as they're contrasting in some sort of way and preferably one, you know, uh, Shakespeare or period type piece okay. so that it's not maybe not a language that's as familiar as doing something very contemporary so that we can just see whether you can deal with text. Right. Does, and does it, that kind of get them out of their like a comfort zone sort of? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's to challenge you a little bit. Okay. Um, now these auditions first, if you have, tra if, you, if you don't say, Oh, well, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? Uh, Send me a line, drop me a line, uh, and I can give you some suggestions. I can give you lots of suggestions. I'd love to have a little chat with you first to find out kind of who you are and what would work well for you. Um, but we'll certainly help you find a piece if you need, if you need some help finding a piece. Um, and what we're really looking for is not necessarily a brilliant performance. We're looking to see if there's any potential there. And you would be so surprised at the shocks we've had in the past. People that we have seen initially or spoken to initially and thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come into the room and they may not be perfect. Mm -hmm. They may not be perfect, but we see something in them and we say, yes, there's definitely something there. And in two or three years time, they're Cool. Amazing. So in a way, it's almost like you're looking for, you aren't looking for a perfect actor. No. Nope. You want to see someone who has potential and is willing to work 
and is willing to, willing to improve on what they what they're coming on coming at coming in with. Yes, exactly, and and that has the right attitude about mm -hmm. acting, right? I mean, acting is not just about look what I can do. Right. It's about having the desire to really dig into uh, understanding a character, to uh, having the desire to really communicate ideas, you know? And, uh, and if we can instill that in you and you have some spark of that in you already, there's a good chance we're gonna look at that and say, hmm, you know, they might not be perfect, Very but cool. that's our job to make yeah. you perfect. I'll try to get you there anyway. Um, uh, there's something else I wanted to say about the audition process. Oh, right. Um, you don't have to come here to do it. We do auditions here. We also do auditions in St. John's every year. Um, but for budgetary reasons, we can't fly all over the country to do these auditions. So we accept videotape auditions. It's always best to do it in person because we can talk to you. We can work with you a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we can see what happens if we say, oh, yeah, that was great. Can you do that now standing on your head with with uh, with your feet clapping? <laughs> and just see what you do with that. Just, just, just kind of fun to yeah. do that. And, and it sort of gives us an idea of how, how you respond to direction, crazy as it may be. Um, but, you know, we don't absolutely have to do that. We, mm -hmm. uh, we accept video auditions and many, many, many video auditions have been successful. So, so don't be nervous about that at all. What we ask is if, if you do do a video audition, there are no cuts in it. So you do a piece from beginning to end nonstop. So you can't go four lines, cut, splice that together, right. and the next four right. lines and it'll be perfect. We can tell, we can tell. <laughs> um, so just do it in one take. All right, you can do one piece and then stop, have a coffee, get yourself together and change costumes or something if you want, I suppose, if you really want to. Sure. Um, and, then, and, then, uh, and then do the next piece, but just do them right from the beginning to the end. You don't have to have a costume. <laughs> but but if they really if you really want to I suppose you could. <laughs> you uh, Kristen's uh, flagging me down and is I think telling me that we have a question coming in. So oh great! I'm gonna pull that up. Um, this is actually a question from uh, one of our recruiters on the road, just saying that one of the common request questions that they have is, um, can a theater student minor in English while they're doing the theater program? It's a great question, and the answer is uh, yes. We've had a lot of theater students who have gone on to get their English degree fast track mm -hmm. into an English degree. Um, I think you can do that in a year. I think you it, it uh, after you get your theater degree, you can get an English degree in a year. It might be eighteen months. I'm not absolutely sure about that, mm -hmm. but I know that it doesn't take any longer than eighteen months. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another question from Katrina. She says uh, she's just wondering. You mentioned uh, a conservatory program. I think you're comparing mm -hmm. uh, the, the two. What do you mean by a conservatory program? Can you just kind of a conservatory program is where you get up in the morning and you start your day by taking a movement class, and then you go from the movement class to a singing class, and then from a singing class to a clown class, and from a clown class to an acting class, and from an acting class to production, and that's your day. You don't take any academic courses at all, so mm -hmm. you don't learn about the literature, really, mm -hmm. except by what you do in the, in the course. Chances are you won't take a theater history course, you won't take, a, uh, you won't take a, a, an art history course, um, and you won't have electives, and uh, the kinds of things that you can you know, if, if you, like I said before, if you get the third year and you say, I don't know if I, this is really, you know, I thought I was going to do better and I'm doing okay and I've learned a lot, but I kind of would like to go in a different direction. You don't have much choice there. Sure. You're locked in. You're either going to be an actor or you're not going to be an actor. This yeah. is either going to work for you or it's not going to work for you, period. Okay. Okay. In our, in our program, because we do we do have these academic courses, you have all kinds of different options. Mm -hmm. And it's also a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree program. Mm -hmm. A lot of conservatory programs, not all, but a lot of conservatory programs are not degree programs. Right. So that's the major difference there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, another question from Della, and she says, uh, when you're applying, uh, do you need to include a list of theater you've already been involved in? Yeah, that's always a good idea to okay. do. I mean, we, we like to know, you know, how much experience you've had. It's not essential. You don't have to have a list of theater as long as your mm -hmm. arm. I say to my students when they graduate, when they're about to graduate, and we, we have a class in fourth year where we talk about auditioning and, and what a good resume is. And I say to them all the time, I say, 
if your resume is short and there's no reason at all why it shouldn't be sure. when you graduate from a university program. You know, you haven't done a whole lot of stuff. Don't yeah. try to pretend that you have because you haven't. Yeah. Um, but how excited you are about what you have done speaks volumes about what kind of a person right. you want to work with. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think if you want to submit a resume of your work to us as a part of in as a part of your letter that's excellent that's great if you want to include that with the letter that you send to us mm -hmm. absolutely that's great we'd love to see it and and if you come and audition in person uh with us and you bring a photo and resume with you excellent that shows us that uh that you have some experience and you have an idea what you're doing cool that's excellent um and Della also asked um how many students are in the program usually well, um, we have a cap that we don't very often hit by choice. Um, you want to keep the class. We want to try to keep the classes small, so they kind of hover between. Right, right now we have classes around ten, twelve in the acting program, the stagecraft program around s sort of between six and uh, I think we have six and under. We have had larger classes and may again in the future have larger classes, but we like to try to keep it kind of in the teens, you know, I mean, we don't want to have like 20 mm -hmm. some odd students uh, it, because that makes it kind of difficult and harder to, to get all the concepts across because every actor has his own way of going about things. And there are so many different things to look at with each actor that you really, a smaller class is a better thing. So we like to try to keep yeah. our classes small. Okay. Uh, Awake, the username Awake in Winter asks, um, how contemporary should the contemporary piece be if they're auditioning? Uh, ooh, I would say a contemporary piece could be anything that was written kind of after, after what? Even 1950, let's okay. say. Okay. You know, so it gives so, you a ton of space. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a fair bit of space there. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you know, 2013, 2014. It doesn't have to be something like that. But uh, but something something that is um, kind of more contemporary language so that it's not from a different period. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if someone, if, if one of these people are at home and um, are thinking maybe in, in March they're going to apply for Grand Four or sometime over the winter they're going to apply, um, what do you what do you think something that they could be doing to uh, prepare for theater school um, to make them a better actor or if they're on stagecraft side you know to, to prepare for that oh my that's a tough one um, well I guess um, thinking about you know what kind of a what kind of a uh, an interview or audition they're gonna put together mm -hmm. uh, practicing that um, uh, maybe you know, getting stuff together so that they can actually do it in front of somebody else for yeah. a while. Um, try to keep your grades up because, you know, you have to have a 75 overall in mm -hmm. what is it? It's uh, a 70%. 70% in English, uh, a mathematics, a, a uh, science, mm -hmm. and a social science, mm -hmm. and an elective. Yeah. Is that correct? That's yeah. right. You got it. Um, that's the one area where I always never quite... Um, uh, so, you know, make sure that your marks are up there. If they're not up there, and you have a really keen interest in coming here, let me know. Um, you know, if if you do a good audition and we think that you have talent, we will fight to get you into the program. We will see what kind of waivers we can do, or maybe you can write a, an entrance exam or do something to get you in. Um, you know, we don't like to see people who are talented but just didn't happen to take math and science in, in high school kind of booted out of our course sure. because they don't qualify because we don't do a whole lot of the math and science stuff here in the stagecraft program of course you know you have to know a little bit about math and science yeah. to learn the physics of some cert certain things mm -hmm. certain aspects and that sort of thing but but uh for the most part those don't have to be your strong suit so okay perfect um that's all we have for questions. Uh, is there anything else you might want to say that you're talking to a, a high school student or someone who maybe is recently out of high school and is thinking about the theater program mm -hmm. and you want to give them a last, a last little <clears throat> message about about the program or about preparing for it or or about well, theater in general? Okay. Well, let let me be, uh, uh, let me let me talk to you a little bit about what I think acting is about. How about that? 
go for it. Acting, acting for me is about, is about finding the moments in life. Life is full of millions and millions and millions of moments. It's not just about expressing an emotion that sort of sweeps across uh, whatever play you have to be in. It's about finding each little moment in that play and really living in each of those moments. And you'll discover when you do that, that what you end up with at the end is maybe something that you never expected you would end up with. As long as you're true to that moment, to each of those little moments, um, a, a play or a performance of any kind will take you somewhere. It will take you somewhere. You don't need to take it anywhere. You need to just let it take you. A big part of acting is just getting out of your own way. <laughs> And that means uh, that we have so many things that we do to protect ourselves. Um, and once we, once we open up and mm -hmm. throw that protection away, um, suddenly a whole world opens up to us and we can see more clearly. We really see, we really hear. And that's what we strive for here. That, and of course, you know, honing your instrument so that you can play it well. Right. That's yeah. excellent. That's, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank Good. You. Um, that's it for today and for our first episode of uh, of Grenfell Talk. So thank you very much, Jerry, for coming by. Thank you for really, having me as really, the first guy. I really I feel pretty special. Oh, you think you should. Um, if you're at home and you have questions, um, we just posted up the uh, the website is down below and our Twitter uh, handle is down below. Um, shoot us an email um, if you want to get in touch with Jerry. Chat with the program. Um, head over to the website and, or just send us an email at study at grenfell.mun.ca and uh, we'll get you in touch with Jerry um, as soon as possible. Um, if you want to come for a visit, just let us know. Send us an email and uh, we'll tour around the facilities. You can meet the man himself. Uh, maybe check out some of the theater things that are happening on campus um, just to give you more of, an, uh, more of a feel for, for what we do here. And... Uh, I think there's no better way to do that than, you know, this is cool and I think what we can do here is pretty interesting. Um, but when you step into the fine arts building and you and you can step into the theater and really see um, what the possibilities are, um, it's a pretty special feeling. And it's a pretty special feeling for any program to be able to step into uh, the space and to get an idea of what you could do there and what you can do there. So my name is Tom Cochran. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time.